May 10, 2024. Satellite control rooms around the world lit up with alerts. Something was hitting Earth's magnetic field. Hard. Within hours, nearly half of all satellites in low orbit fired their thrusters simultaneously. Starlink satellites that should have stayed in orbit for months started falling early. GPS systems glitched. Communication networks flickered. The official explanation came quickly. A geomagnetic storm. The most powerful in over 20 years. Solar particles slamming into our magnetosphere. And that is true. It did happen. But here is what the news did not mention. At that exact moment, on the other side of the world, China was running the most advanced fusion experiments in human history. And they were building something even more powerful at a facility most Americans have never heard of. A 50 million amps pulsed power machine. Twice the power of anything the United States has ever built. It was run by Peng Xian Jue, the physicist who designed China's hydrogen bomb. Now, I'm not saying these things are connected, but the timing raises questions that nobody in Washington seems willing to answer. And that is what this video is about. Not conspiracy theories, just the documented facts and the pattern they form when you lay them out side by side. Let's start with what is actually happening to Earth's magnetic field. This is not speculation. NASA has been tracking it for decades. There is a region over the South Atlantic where our planetary shield is weak. It is called the South Atlantic Anomaly. NASA describes it as a dent in Earth's magnetic field, a pothole in space. This weak spot has been growing. Since 2014, it has expanded by an area roughly half the size of continental Europe. But here is what changed. Around 2020, the weakening suddenly accelerated. Professor Chris Finlay at the Technical University of Denmark has been studying data from the European Space Agency Swarm Satellites. His conclusion was that there is something special happening in this region that is causing the field to weaken in a more intense way. The magnetic field lines are doing something they should not. Instead of radiating outward from Earth's core as they are supposed to, some of them are diving back in, reversing direction. And now the anomaly is splitting. What used to be one weak zone is becoming two. This is not just an academic curiosity. It has real consequences. Every time a satellite passes through this region, it is exposed to higher radiation. Systems short circuit, data gets corrupted. The Hubble Space Telescope has to shut down its sensitive detectors during every pass through the anomaly. Japan's Hitomi X-ray Observatory, their most powerful space telescope, was destroyed in 2016. The chain of events that killed it started when it passed through the South Atlantic anomaly. Astronauts on the International Space Station report seeing strange flashes of light when they close their eyes in this region. Cosmic rays penetrate the weakened shield and strike their retinas. Here is what is troubling. Scientists cannot fully explain why the acceleration started when it did. They have theories about Earth's core dynamics, about molten iron flows deep beneath the surface. But when you ask them to explain the timing, why 2020, the honest ones will tell you they are not certain. Keep that date in mind. We are going to come back to it. Now let's talk about what China has been building. Mianyang, Sichuan province. Most Westerners have never heard of it. Intelligence analysts know this city very well. They call it China's science city. It is home to the China Academy of Engineering Physics, CAEP. It is the facility that built China's first hydrogen bomb. Today, it is where they develop nuclear warheads, directed energy weapons, and hypersonic missiles. Recently, American reconnaissance satellites captured images of something new rising from this complex. A massive X-shaped building. Analysts who examined the imagery recognized the layout immediately. It looks like America's National Ignition Facility in California, the world's most powerful laser system, but bigger much bigger. Up to 228 high-powered laser beams, nearly two megajoules of energy delivered to a single point. This facility was not announced at any international scientific conference. Nobody published papers about it. Western scientists were not invited to tour it. 
it was discovered through satellite reconnaissance. The Chinese call their laser program Shen Guang, which means divine light. Shen Guang 3 was completed in 2015. But this new facility, Shen Guang 4, is designed to achieve something Shen Guang 3 could not fusion ignition. And that's not all they're building. Nearby, another program is taking shape the world's most powerful Z-pinch machine. A Z-pinch device uses massive electrical current to compress plasma. You run current through a fuel target, and the magnetic field it creates crushes the plasma inward. If you do it right, you can create conditions hot and dense enough for nuclear fusion. America's most powerful Z-pinch machine is at Sandia National Laboratories in New Mexico. It runs at about 25 million amps, China is building one that runs at 50 million amps. To put that in perspective, a lightning bolt carries about 30,000 amps. This machine will deliver a pulse more than 1,000 times more powerful than lightning, concentrated into a space smaller than your finger, for a few billionths of a second. The man leading this program is Pong Xianjue. You do not get more connected to China's nuclear weapons establishment than Peng. He was one of the senior designers of their hydrogen bomb. Now he is building the most powerful pulsed energy device on Earth. A 2024 Chinese physics review stated the program's goal in plain language to simulate nuclear explosions in the laboratory. The same document called for accelerating the construction of large-scale electromagnetic scientific devices. Officially, this is about clean energy, about simulation, about scientific research. But let's talk about what these experiments actually produce. Every high-energy fusion experiment generates electromagnetic pulses. This is not controversial. It is basic physics. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, where America does its own fusion research, has measured these effects. They measured electric fields in the hundreds of thousands of volts per meter and frequencies spanning from low radio waves out to 5 gigahertz. The recorded pulses were powerful enough to damage sensitive equipment, even inside hardened facilities. Those measurements were at 25 million amps. What happens at 50 million amps? Chinese military journals have discussed a concept called super EMP weapons. Some documents describe pulses capable of 200,000 volts per meter, enough to fry electronics across a wide area. Now, you might be thinking, okay, but these pulses happen inside a facility. How could they affect Earth's magnetic field? Fair question. Let me give you some context. You've probably heard of HARP. It's a research facility in Alaska that studies the ionosphere, the electrically charged layer of our upper atmosphere. Conspiracy theorists love to claim HARP can control the weather or manipulate minds. It can't. That's nonsense. But what HARP actually does is interesting. It operates at 3.6 megawatts and transmits radio waves into the ionosphere. At that power level, it creates measurable effects, small disturbances, artificial auroras that sensitive cameras can detect. The effects dissipate within minutes. The ionosphere heals itself. But China's Z-pinch machines don't operate at megawatts. They operate at terawatts, millions of times more powerful than HARP. These systems concentrate energy into microsecond pulses. Terawatts is the scale we're talking about. Flux compression technology can generate magnetic fields up to 1,000 Teslas. For comparison, Earth's natural magnetic field is about 50 microteslas. These machines create fields 20 million times stronger than the planet itself produces. Now, no one is claiming that a single pulse from a facility in Sichuan province can directly weaken the magnetic field over the South Atlantic. But here's the thing. No one has ever operated a 50 million amp device before. The electromagnetic effects at that scale remain theoretical. Until someone actually runs it. Let's look at what China says about all this. Their official position is clear. Peaceful energy research and international cooperation. Clean power for humanity. Song Yuntao, Vice President at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, has been quoted saying they hope to bring fusion energy into practical use for humanity. China participates in ITER, 
the massive international fusion project being built in France. They publish papers, they announce records, and they invite certain foreign scientists to tour certain facilities. In January 2025, they announced that their East Tokamak, their artificial sun, maintained a plasma at over 100 million degrees for more than 17 minutes. That was called a world record. This was celebrated globally as a breakthrough for clean energy. And maybe that is all it is. But the Pentagon sees a different pattern. The US State Department has been warning about something called military-civil fusion for years. It is not a conspiracy theory. It is official Chinese policy. Under Chinese national security law, private companies cannot refuse to share technology with military programs. There is no firewall between civilian research and weapons development. If a Chinese lab makes a breakthrough in fusion, that breakthrough is automatically available to the People's Liberation Army. This is not speculation. It is how their system is designed to work. A House investigation recently revealed that over $2.5 billion in American defense-funded research was connected to Chinese military-linked entities. 300 Pentagon grants were found to have funded projects tied to People's Liberation Army laboratories. Decker Everleth, an analyst at the research nonprofit CNA, has examined satellite imagery of these new facilities. His assessment was that there is a pretty significant increase in Chinese capability to conduct miniaturized weapons experiments and to boost their understanding of various materials used within weapons. He added that these new facilities are likely to surpass US capabilities for certain kinds of weapons development. China is investing up to $3 billion annually in fusion research. That is triple what America spends. They are producing 10 times more fusion PhDs than American universities. They are filing more fusion patents than any other nation. And here is the question that keeps nagging at analysts. And it is a simple one. Why spend billions building the world's most powerful fusion devices at weapons laboratories if this is just about electricity? You do not need a hydrogen bomb designer running your clean energy program. Now I want to be careful here. I'm not claiming there is a proven connection between China's experiments and the magnetic anomaly. There is not. But some researchers have started asking uncomfortable questions about timing. The South Atlantic anomaly's accelerated weakening began around 2020. China's advanced fusion testing ramped up during the same period. The May 2024 geomagnetic storm produced effects that caught satellite operators off guard. China's East Tokamak was setting records that same year. Coincidence? Maybe. Probably. But there is a theory that has been circulating among some analysts. Could high-energy experiments that generate magnetic fields thousands of times stronger than Earth's natural field create disturbances that propagate outward? The official scientific position is clear. Impossible. The scales do not match. A pulse in Sichuan cannot affect the magnetosphere over Brazil. But that position is based on existing technology, on experiments at current scales. What about cumulative effects? Fusion experiments are pulsed thousands of times. Each individual pulse dissipates within microseconds. The system resets. But repeated pulses over months and years, the effects there are less certain. Nobody has studied that because nobody has been able to do it at these power levels before. And there is a darker theory some have proposed. What if this is not accidental? Think about it. If someone wanted to test exotic electromagnetic weapons that could affect satellites, disrupt GPS, and interfere with military communications, what would that program look like? You would need massive pulsed power infrastructure. You would want it at a secure location, far from prying eyes. You would give it a civilian cover story, clean energy research. You would put nuclear weapons scientists in charge. Everything China has built fits that description. I am not saying that is what is happening. I am saying the pieces fit, and the timing raises questions that the official story does not address. So where does this leave us? Let me separate what we know from what we do not. The facts that are not in dispute. Earth's magnetic field is weakening in specific regions. That is confirmed by data from multiple space agencies. The weakening has accelerated since 2020. The European Space Agency swarm satellites have tracked it. 
China is building the world's most powerful pulsed energy fusion devices. They have documented it themselves. These facilities are located at weapons laboratories operated by weapons scientists. That is a matter of public record. The Pentagon has expressed concern about China's military and civilian fusion strategy. It is in their official reports. Satellite anomalies during 2024 and 2025 reached unprecedented levels. Space agencies worldwide tracked them. These are facts. They are not contested. What we do not know is whether any of it is connected. Is there a link between high energy experiments and magnetic field changes? Unknown. What exactly is the Shenguang 4 facility designed to accomplish? Classified. What has China's 50 million amp Z pinch program already achieved in tests? We do not know. Why did the anomaly's acceleration coincide with China's fusion expansion? Unexplained. What does American intelligence actually know and when did they learn it? Not public. The implications, if there is a connection, are staggering. A nation that can influence Earth's magnetic field would possess a weapon unlike anything in history. No explosion. No invasion. Just disruption. Every satellite vulnerable. Every GPS signal unreliable. Every military communication potentially compromised. Deniable. Untraceable. Devastating. And the implications if there is not a connection? Well, Earth's magnetic field is weakening on its own, for reasons we do not fully understand. That is concerning enough. And America is falling behind in fusion technology regardless. China will dominate this field within the decade, with all the military applications that brings. Either way, we should probably be paying more attention. The official story is that China is building clean energy infrastructure. The magnetic field is weakening naturally. There is nothing to see here. Maybe that is true, but official stories have been incomplete before. They told us cigarettes were safe. They told us there were weapons in Iraq. They told us the financial system was stable in 2007. Sometimes the pattern is visible before the proof arrives. The pattern here is documented. The timing is documented. The secrecy is documented. What is missing is the connection or the admission that one exists. What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if this is the kind of story that interests you, the kind where you follow the evidence and ask the questions nobody else is asking, hit subscribe. Because this one's not over.